Welcome everyone, episode 2 is finally here. We are so excited to show you what we've been up to. Before we settle in, make sure to leave a thumbs up if you like the video, and subscribe if you're fancy. We've added our links in the description if you want to join our community on Twitter or our new Discord server. Okay? Okay, enough of that. Let's dive in. We've been busy since our last update, and since then, we've added custom match lobbies. You can join one, maybe a fun night with friends, or host your own. We built a cool new space for you to hang out in. It's warm, it's got those summer vibes, it's very high point. You can play 1v1 all the way to 3v3, and the coolest part is that you can customize with your friends. Maybe you want to color coordinate, match gear, or maybe what makes you different makes you beautiful. Thanks, Mom. You can also change teams, change maps, and even spectate matches. So, ready up, and go have some fun. Let's check out some visual updates on Underpass Park. We love the vibes of this map, but the blockout was never completed. We wanted to make each side distinct, like we talked about in our last episode. So, we added some key visual elements like colorful graffiti and a few skateboards, and I may have spent like several hours, maybe days, trying to land a kickflip. And I did. I forgot to record that one though. Ultimately, we just finished the thought of the original blockout. Basketball courts on one side, maybe leads to a beach, a little shopping district on the other. I can see little boutiques, coffee shops, outdoor seating, colorful awnings. Both sides are flanked by the underpass skate park, a street style section, and a classic bowl. Nothing's finished, most of this is still primitive shapes, but what's important is to create intent, and we'll build on this foundation as we go. It's going to be sweet. We've made some really cool improvements to our replay mode, but we realize not many people have even seen it to begin with. So we're just going to preview the whole thing right now. Every match you play is saved to your replay folder. Let's open one now, maybe relive one of your best matches. No, no, no! Cherished memories. So everything you'd expect is here. You can hop through time, forward, backward, pause, and play. But the real fun is in the view modes. Free cam needs no explanation, just move the camera as you wish. It's great for flying around the scene and creating a specific shot. With aim at cam, you still control the camera's location, but you select a target, a player or the ball, and it will center on them. This one's great for following fast action from a set location. Follow cam anchors to a player or the ball and brings the camera along for the ride. You can move in and out and rotate around. This one's probably my favorite. It's really versatile. This is autopilot. This one's hands-free and follows all the action from the sidelines. I use this when I'm double fisting game fuel after a long day of scrims. Poggers! <sighs> I'm sorry. All right, let's look at the new hotness, player cam. This is the in-game player's perspective of the match. When you want to experience someone doing work, this is the one. It shows the physicality and feel of the game perfectly. Maybe you want to watch Jorby going beast mode with that end zone defense. Maybe you want to see Leaf drop a dime into Corelli's backpack without him breaking stride. Maybe you want to experience what it's like being Rob. I mean, I guess no one really wants that. Another really cool update, we've prototyped a photo mode. We've covered this in another video, so I'll just give you a Cliff Notes version here. First, find something cool and pause the action. Then, frame up your shot. There's different focal lengths, so you can go really wide and almost fisheye, or push in like a telephoto lens. And finally, you can choose a focal point and change your aperture, which affects how much depth of field you'll have. And there it is, a preview of our full replay suite. None of this is my work, so I get to sing its praises. I love this feature. It's a game changer for a two-person team making a game like this. I cannot wait to see what y'all do with this. Scoring is the big moment, so it has to feel awesome. There's a big transfer of energy when you break through the goal line. It looks cool, it feels great, but we've been scoring forward for a long time. Directional shooting had always been the next layer, but it was lower priority, an additive to a mechanic that already worked well. 
Our movement is free flowing in 360 degrees, but our shooting wasn't. Sometimes a fast fluid play would stutter because an adjustment was needed. Then we reached the tipping point. I caught a pass with my back to goal, but I shot anyways, and I knew it wouldn't work. It was exciting because team play was emerging, but disappointing because the mechanics didn't exist yet. So we started with the backward shot. When I'm roughing in, it's quick and dirty. Sometimes I'll reference other animations, but I very rarely mess around. When I plug the backward animation into the forward shot, this happened. And I'm still very proud of this achievement, but it's all to say that animation's only part of the battle. We had to get player direction when they shoot and make some adjustments to our shot camera. Some of these progress shots are ugly, but that's how we prototype. It's about proving out the design. If it's fun and feels good, you can make it pretty later. I reworked the backward shot several times. The first pass just felt weak, so I turned the dial to 11. I essentially made it a German suplex from professional wrestling. There is so much energy there now. I love it. Believe it or not, basketball wasn't an initial design inspiration for High Point. The original shot was more an American football style dive across the goal line. But as we iterated on what the goal might look like and what scoring should feel like, it was obvious that slamming the ball was the only way to go. And since we were going to add new shots, might as well look at a great resource. 49, 45, and a 50, and Drexler probably in danger of being eliminated, 46. And... Oh. <laughs> that is Air Jordan at his best. As far as reference goes, that one's pretty good. Drexler probably in danger of being eliminated, 46. And... Oh. <laughs> he goes in straight, goes up in the air, now he's sideways. Look at the air, look at the hang time, look at the flying motion. <laughs> So now, approach the goal from any angle. Whether playing as a team or making highlight-worthy plays, directional shooting gives you plenty of opportunities to be creative. We've overhauled the field so much, we've called this update Field 2.0. First, the goal gap, or maybe you prefer Death Trap. The intention was for short shots to comically fall off the map, but it created awkward footing for everyone. Defense is hard enough, you didn't need a cliff at your heels, so we just removed it. I know, genius. We gave that space back to defense and aligned the goal with the back of the end zone. If you're ever in doubt, the answer is usually to simplify. And if you're asking, what about the comedy of a short shot that misses? Well, we just raised the goal to compensate. You're still free to embarrass yourself in front of your friends. These adjustments and the wall, which we'll get into in a moment, required updating our end zone model. It ended up looking so clean that we had to do some glamour shots. Would you just look at them? Ugh. We're also experimenting with some new field rules. Skilled brawlers could effectively take the goal away from the defense. We love pressuring the keeper, but there was zero trade-off. We want players to make interesting choices. Now, if an offensive player enters the goal box, their core, the little sphere underfoot, will enter a damage state, meaning incoming hits do double knockback. Goalkeepers shouldn't feel like sitting ducks. After all, that's their turf. Goalie pressure now becomes a risk-reward play. The keeper has KO potential, but a well-timed swipe could buy some time for a shot. We want our maps to be open air. You're in these spaces. They aren't distant backdrops. But our first pass wall boundary was too understated. New players hardly knew it existed. So we started with a consistent through line, tracing the boundary edge. We added some vertical markers to make the wall more legible, and all of this raises with the end zone. So why go through all this if players still fly off the field? Because the ball behaves differently. And if we're going to set up for some sweet wall play, we needed players to understand how to use it. We're really excited to see how this evolves in players' hands. And if it wasn't obvious, we're going to build on this foundation. We've got a few more things up our sleeve. Physicality is at the core of our gameplay. You know, every action has opposites and equals to react. Whatever. To reinforce this, Ragdoll was added when a player's shot collided with the goalposts, affectionately called a doink. This KO'd the player, but our long-term plan was to allow players to get back up. But multiplayer physics are hard, so we put it on the back burner and decided to live with a few other instances where Ragdoll was preferred. One of those were shots that landed in play. Shooting should feel vulnerable, like laying out for a dive, putting your body on the line, but lacking a Ragdoll and recovery system, the shooter would land upright. <laughs> 
It just lacked the physicality, and it didn't really penalize players who used it as a traversal method. Uh, please report to the principal's office. There were also moments when shooting players collided with defenders, in air, but nothing happened. Here's a perfect example. Even though the strike was missed, the positioning and timing of the keeper was brilliant. But like before, the shooter lands on foot, with the ball, and scores anyways. That's just not an outcome we're happy with. What we are happy with is all these interactions now. Colliding with the post is still hilarious. That impact puts your core into the double knockback state, but now, instead of being KO'd, you can get back up. That is, if a defender doesn't try and finish you off. Now, if your shot doesn't connect, you'll fall to the ground. Not only does it match our expectations of physicality, but the moments following are more interesting. The ball fumbles, you risk sliding off the arena, depending on your momentum. Defense has the opportunity to knock you off, and none of this ends with a cheap goal seconds later. Collide in the air with a defender, and everyone bursts into laughter at the unexpected result. The shooting player is knocked to the ground, and the defender is knocked backwards. Everyone is scrambling to clean up the mess during this high-stakes moment. It's just more fun. The same scenarios that we had before are now significantly more interesting and vibrant for everyone in the match. The outcomes before weren't bad, they just didn't pay off the energy that got them there. We're going to keep doing stuff like this until every interaction in High Point is awesome. Well, we made it. We didn't know what to expect when we posted our first devlog, but your support was <laughs> incredible. It kind of blew us away. We love this game, love working on it, love playing it, and it's kind of surreal that we've got a small community who seem to love it too. We're so excited about the future of High Point. Thanks again for your support. We love you. See you next time.